Indeed, there is no nation that has passed except that there has been a messenger who was sent to that nation. So narrate to them the stories in order that they may ponder. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says in the hadith that the first creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the pen. And then Allah ordered that pen to write. So that pen continued to write everything that will take place to the day of judgment. Write on what? Write on the lawh al-mahfuz. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it was Allah azza wa jal existing and nothing else. And his throne was above the water. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had written in the dhikr everything that will take place from the creation of the heavens and the earth. Before creating the heavens and the earth by 50,000 years. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created the angels. What do they do? They worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And they never get tired. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this universe in six days. Before the creation of Adam, there was a different creation than the human beings. As we mentioned, there was the creation of the angels. And then Allah Azza wa Jal created the heavens and the earth. Before creating Adam, Allah created the jinn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels from light. And He created the jinn from flame. He created the jinn and they lived on earth for 2,000 years. The jinn are not the smartest. They are very powerful, but they are very dumb. And the jinn were living on this earth, but they were so corrupt on earth. They killed each other, deceived each other, cheated on each other, took the rights from each other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an army of the angels to fight them. And this army of the angels fought them and pushed them out of the land and made them live on the islands of the sea. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and they've been living on there till the day of judgment. There was a jinn. His name was Iblis. And he had a position among the ranks of the angels. But he wasn't an angel, he was a jinn. He was a righteous servant of God. However, Iblis had something in here that wasn't right. Iblis was going to be tested with his righteousness. He said to them, Oh my angels, I am about to create a creation, a being made of clay. Now the angels had known the jinns before what they had done. They shed blood and corrupted on earth. So the angels replied. They said, O oh our Lord, are you going to create a creature on earth that will shed blood again and corrupt again when we glorify your name and praise? They're not questioning, but they're asking to seek knowledge the confused. Oh, our Lord, look, I mean, you know, here we are. We're praising you. We're glorifying you. The jinns, look what they did. We don't understand the reason behind creating another creation when they're going to shed blood and corrupt, what are they actually saying? They're afraid. They're saying in other words, Oh, our Lord, have we done something to you? Are you displeased with us? Because we're glorifying. Here we are. But obviously they didn't understand what's happening. God did not explain it to them because they will not understand until they see. So all he said was this, I know that which you just do not know. With each other, the angel said, let Allah create whoever He wants. He would not create someone who is more honorable than us and more knowledgeable than us. Let us spend a few moments how He created Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. The Quran uses several words. One is dust, one is soil, one is clay, and one is the dark clay. So why all these words are used for the same creation? because it is depicting different stages in the creation of man. Allah took dust from the earth and that dust was taken from different parts of the earth. The soil on the earth is different colors. You have red, you have slightly lighter color, you have a darker color, you have different shades of brown and so on. So there were different shades and different colors. And he took these from different parts of the globe, from the valleys, from the mountain tops, from the sandy regions, from the rocky regions and so on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it all together. 
So Adam alayhi salatu was salam was created from different types, different colors and different qualities. So from his progeny, there are different colors. And there are people who are easy to get along with, people who are very difficult to get along with, people who are hardcore, strong, powerful, and people who are weaklings. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of them so differently. And this is why we have different colors and this is why we have different shades, different attitudes and different characteristics and characters. The narrations make mention of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first had this dust and then he added water to it, it became soil and then he shaped it up, it became clay and he left it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam with his hand hands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam in a figure, empty, and he left him. Now what was the size of Adam alayhi salatu was salam? So he was either 60 meters or he was either 18 meters. Either way, he was huge. And the hadith says, Allah created Adam upon his image. Now what is meant by this? Allah created him on his image from day one, which means he was already big. He already had size. He already had eyes. That is the meaning of creation in his image. Adam was created in the image of Adam wholly in those meters. He was already an adult when he was created. Most scholars suggest that he is the most handsomest and beautiful looking human being, even more than Yusuf salam. Why? Because as Allah said, I created with my hands. When Allah created Adam السلام, Iblis had heard the angels what they had asked and everybody's talking about it and Iblis he's, he's starting to think here well, what is so special about this creature which God had created? Curiosity and at the same time something began to develop in his heart a form of jealousy why? Here is Iblis among the rank of the angels wanting to please his Lord and now something had come up which he had never anticipated never thought of and suddenly he feels something strange coming out he could have controlled it but he let it take over consume him it was the jealousy so he went to look at this creature and he saw it it didn't look too impressive to him it was made of clay it's dark it was dark in color because there was no soul in it, it was just clay he tapped it and he kicked it and it made a ringing sound and he was able to th flow through it because he's created from a less denser material which is f flames of fire he was able to flow through this body and he found that we were hollow so he thought you are a weak creature as time went Allah left the body of Adam alayhi salam like that and every time Iblis looked at it he felt fear a bit but at the same time, he's trying to beat his fear and say, I'm better than you. You're not going to be better than me. Do whatever you want. Now, the angels, on the other hand, said among each other, look, inshallah, God willing, he's not displeased with us. But no matter what he creates, we know that we are God's favored. But they weren't jealous. They were just fearful. Is God displeased with them? Have they lacked in their duties. That's all. Different to Iblis. Iblis is like jealousy. He's not going to be better than me. I'm going to be better than him. What's so special about him? I will always be God's favorite and I'm going to do everything about it to be that way. It's like that. The angels were, we're sure he's not going to be better than us, but if he is, we're not upset so long as he's pleased with us. Like that. Allah left him there until that jealousy developed more and more and more. And now it turned into proudiness, arrogance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blew into Adam in a way that suits his glory and majesty and the soul of Adam entered Adam and Adam will become a living human being. The soul came in slowly into Adam, started from his head and it came down all the way to his feet. And the brain came alive, then the eyes came alive and Adam alayhi salatu wa salam suddenly opened his eyes. Granted full knowledge, Allah says in the Quran, we taught Adam alayhi salam the names of everything. So he was already taught. He already knew the words and the names of everything. So as his eyes opened, he saw the fruits of Jannah. He already understood what it was. And what happened as the 
soul was blown and it was the life came into his nose and his mouth he sneezed one narration says the angel said oh adam thank allah so adam alayhi salatu wassalam says alhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to him that allah has had mercy on you oh adam so as life came into his hands he was seeing the fruits of jannah so he's stretching out but life had not yet come onto his legs so he couldn't get there and this is why the quran says man was always in a rush there was a time when adam alayhi salam was created allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his back removed all his progeny up to the day of qiyamah including every single one of us and showed it to adam he says ya adam this is going to be your progeny you will be succeeding one after the other so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked everybody this question am i not your rabb and they said yes indeed you are so allah says do not come on the day of qiyamah and say we have forgotten about our covenant that we took with you and this question so when that happened adam alayhi salatu was salam he looked at these faces and they were lit and he seen one shiny face and he says who is this so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that is a man from one of the later nations towards the end of time he will come up his name is dawood david may peace be upon him so adam alayhi salam out of curiosity is asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya allah what life did you give him for me you told me you're going to give me a thousand years he was told already so what life did you give him so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we gave him 60 years so adam alayhi salatu was salam asks he says can you not increase him 40 years so allah says we can take it from your life and give him so from a thousand we can cut down 40 and give him so he'll become a hundred so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got confirmation from adam he says okay you give him 40 years from mine and when your lord brought adam alayhi salam before the angels he said to them prostrate to adam the angels all obeyed except for iblis he didn't prostrate he refused the reason he refused is because he allowed himself to be proud arrogant and that resulted in him becoming among the disbelievers allah says what prevented you O iblis to prostrate to one who i have created with my own hands what did iblis respond i am better, I than, am him. better than him you made me, you out, made of me out of fire you made him out of clay clay i'm from fire fire he's from clay he's from clay so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Go down from the heavens. He said, Keep me alive until the day they are resurrected. Give me time. Allah says, We will give you time until the end of the world. Oh Allah, you say he's better than me? I'll show you he's not better than me. I'll deceive him. I will show you. I will misguide them all from the righteous path. I'm going to come from the front of them, from behind them, from their right, from their left. And you find most of them not being from the thankful ones to you. They're not going to worship you. I'm going to come from everywhere. I'm going to deceive them. I'm going to work on them. I'm going to do everything that I can do to take them away from the righteous path. To prove to you they're not better than me. His problem is that human being. He hates that human being of the jealousy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this human being better than Iblis. Allah said, okay, very well. Go ahead, climb on top of any one of them that you are able to and try to delude them away with your voice and try to delude them away by showing them materialism. Be a partner with their children and with their money and give them false hopes. Allah says, but the shaitan never promises anyone except deception. Allah said to him, my true servants, you will not have power over them. Iblis replied, he said, okay, I will lead them all astray except your servants among them who are sincere. Allah in the end says, now get out of it. You have no longer have the role that you have among the angels. You are now an outcast. You have been exiled. I'll fill up the whole fire of you and whoever follows you from them in the whole fire. Allah had taught Adam alayhi salam knowledge. Knowledge that the angels and the jinns did not have. He taught Adam alayhi salam all the names. What are these names? It is 
knowing every single creation, knowing what it is, and knowing how it functions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to go to the angels and he was told to greet the angels. He went up to the angels as instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was told to tell them, peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum. When he greeted them, they greeted him back. Wa alaykum assalamu wa rahmatullah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, tell those angels the names of all these things. And Allah brought all the things in front of the angels. So Allah asked the angels first, do you know the names of these things? And they said, Allah knows we don't know. So Allah says, Oh Adam, tell them the names of these things. And Adam alayhi salam began to recite. This is a tree. This is a stone. This is a mountain. This is this. This is that. The angels were shocked. They did not tell you that I know what's hidden in the heavens and the earth. I know what's exposed and what's hidden. I know exactly what he said you and the angels when you all got together and said, Allah would not create any creation that's more honorable than us and more knowledgeable. And Allah created Adam. He is more honorable than them. Why? Because they prostrated to him. And he is more knowledgeable than them. Why? Because Allah asked them that they didn't know and asked him and knew. Adam alayhi salam was in paradise alone at first. And it says that he felt lonely. And he didn't know what this loneliness was from. So one day he was napping. He found before him his wife Hawa, a woman. And his loneliness immediately faded. It went away. And he asked her, who are you? She said, Allah created me so that you can find your peace and tranquility with me. And then the angels saw this different human being next to Adam. So they asked him, Oh Adam, who's this human being? So Adam called her Hawa. And Hawa is the most beautiful woman that ever existed on the surface of this world. Allah said to Adam السلام, and his wife, Live in paradise. You will never become desperate for food and you will never need to be desperate for clothing. Eat from this paradise anything you desire. But there was one condition as we all know. But see this tree over there? You are not allowed to come near it. You will both become among the ones who have oppressed yourselves. Allah Azza wa Jal had also warned Adam alayhi salam from Iblis. He told him, he is an enemy to you and to your family. Don't go near him. So Adam alayhi salam, he got the orders from Allah Azza wa Jal, clearly understood. So now one day Iblis, after some time, he goes to Adam. He says, oh Adam, can I show you the tree that if you eat from it, you won't die. You won't die at all. You'll have life forever. And you will have lots and lots of belongings that will never stop. You'll own absolutely everything. Now that didn't work. So Iblis went to a further step. He said, think about it. God did not forbid you from that tree except that it's going to turn you into angels. That didn't work. Then he told them, God did not forbid you from the tree except that you will live eternally. He started making up all these different possibilities. And again and again, Iblis will try and attempt again and again and try and deceive Adam to eat from the tree. And then Shaitan said, he made a promise that I'm only a good advisor. I'm just advising you until Adam alayhi salam accepted to eat from that tree. He now had forgotten that it was prohibited. Where do we get this from? The Quran says, and we had made a promise with Adam before, but he forgot about it. And we did not find him to be resolute. He did not make a firm intention to sin and to transgress against Allah. He made a mistake. There was actually a concealing. There was a part of their body which was the aura, it was concealed with light, with nur. When they took from the tree, that nur went away. And so they were naked. And Adam and Hawa had a lot of shyness in them. 
So what did they do? They start to grab from the leaves of the paradise to cover. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them and said, Did I know if forbid you from eating from this tree? And I told you, don't listen to this shaitan. He's an enemy. Allah says, Adam alayhi salam received certain words from Allah. So Allah forgave him after that. What were these words? The two of them said, Oh, our Rabb, we have oppressed ourselves. We have wronged ourselves. And if you are not going to have mercy on us, if you are not going to forgive us, we are going to be the losers, Ya Allah. So forgive us, Ya Allah. And Allah says, we forgave him immediately. You will need to come down to earth. In it, you will go hungry and you will go thirsty and you will have to plow and, and you will have to go through hard work in order to earn your living and your survival. Not like paradise. Allah is telling him the difference between what you were in and now where you're going. In there, you will have a temporary abode and you'll have temporary enjoyment. I will be with you. I will keep giving you guidance and signs. Now if we look at Adam alayhi salam, he came down onto the earth. Where did he land? This we find in the narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, where he says that Adam alayhi salam, he came down in what is known as the indo pak subcontinent, precisely Sri Lanka. There is a mount there known as Adam's Peak. It is said that there is a possibility that that is the place. We don't know for certain that that spot is the place, but roughly there. What about Hawa? Where did she come down? In Jidda. Where is Jidda? Jidda is in the Arabian Peninsula, in what we know today as Saudi Arabia. And what is the meaning of Jidda? It means the grandmother. It is named after her. Adam alayhi salam and Hawa searched for each other. In one narration it says, they found each other on the mountain of Arafat. That's the name of the mountain, the mountain of acquaintance. Maybe because Adam alayhi salam and Hawa found each other on that mountain. Getting to the children of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, how did they come about? Hawa, may peace be upon her, she gave birth 20 times. Each time there was a boy and a girl. They were of different colors, different shapes and sizes in the sense that, you know, the looks were varying from one to the other and so on. And at that time, they had to be married. So how were they going to marry? They had a different law. So as the children grew, one of the oldest children was known as Qabil in the English language Cain. And the one younger than him was known as Habil or Abel in the English language. So what was the difference between these two? Cain was not so good looking and Abel was very handsome. And the sister of Cain was very good looking, but she was born from the same womb. So those two were what we call womb brothers and sisters. And when it came to Abel, he was very good looking, but his sister was not as good looking. So Adam alayhi salam says, you will marry the sister of this one and this one will marry your sister. So Cain, his sister was very good looking. He looked at this girl he's supposed to marry and he says, she's not that good looking. Cain says, I don't want my sister to go to him and I don't want to have his sister. I'd rather have my own sister, he's saying. Astaghfirullah. Habil tried to advise him, my brother, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for this is his decree. Now Adam alayhi salam knew about this, so he brought them together and he said to them, why don't you both go and offer an offering for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see which one will be accepted. In those days, if you donated something or made an offering for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they would see something like fire come down and it will take the offering. It's a sign of acceptance that I have accepted your piety. Habil, he was a shepherd. He had sheep and Qabil was a farmer. He grew wheat and crops. Habil went and got his finest, fattest, best sheep and he gave it as an offering. Qabil went and got his worst bits of wheat that he had. And so Allah accepted the fine one and rejected the ugly one, the piety is what he was after. So because of that, he said, I'm going to kill you. Allahu Akbar. 
Qabil began to develop this. And Habil kept on advising him, My brother, Allah accepts only from those who are pious. Meaning, my brother, if you are pious, Allah will accept it from you. It seems that I have given it impiety. Be a pious person, Allah will accept it from you. It is not because of the sister or whatever. It's because of yourself. Be pious to Allah and all will be resolved. But you're not letting yourself go. You're not submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's given him an advice. But the truth hurt his brother. It only made the jealousy grow. Qabil wanted to kill his brother. What did his brother Habil say? He said, Yet, O oh brother, if you stretch out your hand against me to kill me, I shall not stretch out my hand to kill you. For I fear Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Instead, I would prefer that you bear the burden of my sin and your sin together. And so become an inhabitant of the fire. That is the recompense of the transgressors. One night when Habil was asleep, Qabil grabbed a massive rock and came and crushed his brother's head with the rock. And the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, From that day to the day of judgment, every innocent life that's being killed, Qabil gets a portion of the sayyat. Because he is the first one to start it. And Qabil feel guilty. He sat there looking at his brother. And he started regretting. And now he went away. He went to Adam alayhi salam. And he carried on with the day. And Adam alayhi salam asks him, where's your brother? He says, my brother, I'm not responsible for him. Why do I have to know where he is and what's happening? Immediately Adam alayhi salam knew that there's something wrong. This child is hiding something from me. Now, later on in the evening, he went back to the body and he's looking at it. And the following morning, he's looking at this body again. And now it started releasing a stench. So Qabil put Habil on his back and went. He doesn't know what to do. So while Qabil is walking in the middle of nowhere, what does he do? Confused what to do with his brother. In front of Qabil, two crows will come. One crow will kill the other one. And then after that crow will kill the other one, will dig up a hole and bury that crow and cover him with the dust. So Qabil saw that, he knew that's the way to do with his brother. So he dug up a hole and he buried his brother Habil in that hole. And then he became from the guilty ones, but did not repent. Qabil did not repent. And what did Qabil do after that? Qabil, he grabbed his sister and he ran away from Adam. He's too shy to face his father. And he ran off and lived on the flat surface of the land. People living on the mountains. Qabil was the first human being to live on the flat surface of the land. And then Qabil with his sister started to produce kids. And then the descendants of Qabil started on one side. And Adam alayhi salam on the other side. And the facad and the corruption start to spread from Qabil and his descendants. And thereafter what happened? Adam alayhi salatu was salam and his wife Hawa alayhi salam, they had many children. And he saw some of his grandchildren and his great grandchildren. And it is reported that he'd seen thousands of them. And Adam alayhi salam used to constantly remind them and he used to tell them and some of his children continued that reminder. One of them was a child known as Sheath. He was also a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Adam alayhi salatu was salam got sick and look at Allah's plan. Allah made him wish for something. Wish for what? Certain fruits he had eaten in Jannah. He still remembered the taste. So he was wishing for it, making dua to Allah, saying, Ya Allah, I'm wishing for these fruits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him that at a certain place, you will find something. Not that you will find the fruits, but at a certain place, you will find something. He was not healthy enough to go there. So he decided to send some of his children. He says, go to that place and you will find something for me there. So when they went there, they found some angels. What did they have with them? They were dressed in white. And they had some tools with them. 
there was a pick and a shovel and tools to dig. Now these tools were new to the children of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. These angels told the children of Adam, we are angels and we want you to go back to your father. He is ill and his time is up. So they walked with the children of Adam alayhi salam back to Adam alayhi salam. And as they entered, Hawa, may peace be upon her. She recognized this angel is the angel of death. So she quickly started going behind Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and he says, no, 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 don't worry, move away. And Adam alayhi salam lived for 960 years. Adam alayhi salam's original life's length was a thousand years. When the angel of death came to take the soul of Adam, Adam was amazed. I've still got 40 years to live. So he told him, why are you coming to take my soul now? Am I supposed to live for a thousand years? So the angel of death told him, did you forget the 40 years he gave Dawood? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Adam denied and forgot. And ever since then, his descendants have been denying and forgetting. He says, no problem. However, he first gathered his children. Look at this. On his deathbed. And he reminded them saying, Allah will send messengers to you. He will not leave you alone. These messengers will come. Different languages, different names, different dialects. But their message will all be one calling you to worship one Allah, the one who made you and to stay away from the devil and to be careful that the biggest crime anyone can commit is to associate a partner with the creator. And after he reminded his children, the angels took his soul away and he passed away. When he went, what happened? The angels had come with the tools and they dug a proper grave and they washed the body of Adam alayhi salam with water. They enshrouded him properly and they led the janazah of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. One narration says that Jibreel instructed sheath to lead the salah and another narration says the angels themselves led that salah. Only Allah knows but the salah was done and he was buried and once he was buried, the angels looked at the children of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and says, this is the way you shall do it when anyone from amongst you passes away. Where was he buried? Some narrations say he was buried fil hind, close to where he had descended. Whereas other narrations say that he was buried in Mecca by the mount known as Jabalu Abi Qubais. Just outside where the Haram is now, he was buried somewhere there. And then after the death of Adam, it was his son, Shaith, which took over the leadership of his father and he was the second prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.